in today's game, we are going to be taking on Arsenal. So, is it going to be a case of Highbury Hell or Highbury Heroes in today's episode of Chasing the Fortune? Hello, 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 people. Welcome back to the channel. It is me, Taylor Made Gaming. And yep, like I said in the intro, we are travelling the very short distance across London to go and play Arsenal at Highbury Stadium, that famous, famous old stadium with the clock end. And so many famous West Ham games took place there. Hopefully today can be another one with us getting a victory today. That would be beautiful. But just before we get into that, I will catch you up on what has been going on since we have last been together, which isn't that much, to be honest. We've only played two games in between the last video and this one. But just before we do get into that, I do just want to talk about... These players here that are out of contract, most notably Paolo Di Canio, out of contract at the end of the season. Not sure if I've mentioned it in either of the other videos, but he is refusing to sign a new contract. And as you can see, it's the 3rd of December, so we're only a month away from the transfer window. So we need to make up our minds what we are going to do with him. And the reason he is refusing to sign a new contract is because there is some interest in him from Juventus, who, if I'm not mistaken, he did play for back in the early 90s. Yes, he did. He had three seasons at Juventus. Didn't do that much. But I think they played him on the right wing, if I'm not mistaken, if I do remember correctly from his book. So there's interest in him from Juventus and Valencia, which is major interest. And Liverpool have apparently got minor interest. So let me know down below, what do I do? Do I try and sell him in the January transfer window? Do I try and risk it and hope that Juventus, Valencia and Liverpool all just go away and forget about Di Canio and turn their attentions elsewhere? Or what would you do? Let me know what would you do down below in the comments section. But also, as well as that, Thomas Repka. He apparently doesn't want to sign a new contract either. But also, he's, he's 27. He's just getting into his peak. And I don't agree with this ability and this potential. I think he was a lot better than a two-star right back. That is, if you ask me. Nigel Winterburn, we're definitely getting rid of him. 37 years old, cannot run to save his life. And yeah, we're going to be getting rid of him. This just brings back so many bad memories of West Ham being a retirement home for old players from all over London. So yeah, we're going to be getting rid of him. Saka Hislop, I'm going to be offering him a new contract. Stevie Potts. He's been at West Ham for quite a while at this point. Well, you could say quite a while. His whole career. Ever since 1984. So, I might just offer him a new contract and just see if he retires with us and then give him a coaching deal at the end of his playing days. John Moncur as well. 35 years old. One of the first players I really, really liked at West Ham. He joined us in 94. I started getting into football properly around 97, 98. And he was a very, very nice player to watch. So I might try and keep him as well and do the same with him. And then Omaritsa. He is a player I only remember from the old PC game. Uh, FA Premier League manager, I believe it was called. I'll put the cover up on here when I do the edit. But yeah, Omaritsa, he's a name who always turned out quite well in my saves on that particular game. But don't think he did too much in real life. And once again, in the comment section, if you know what Omaritsa went on to do, please do let me know because I would be very, very interested. And while we're on this subject, thank you very much to the mad scientist 
for answering my question in the last video about Laurent Courtois. Apparently, he only played seven games for us and didn't score at all. So, yeah, no wonder I forgot about him. So, yep, that is all of that. And as I said, we've only played the two games since we was last together. Actually, no, just the one game. Just the one game it is. Sorry about that. Cholton. We played against Cholton. Jermaine Defoe opening the scoring against a team where he started his career as a very young kid. Frederick Canute getting the second in the 87th minute just to really make sure that we got the win. And so that leads us into today's game and we are currently fourth in the league still. Arsenal are third. So for the second video in a row, it's fourth against third. We could go as high as second if results go our way. But that might be a bit of a long shot. But you never ever know. And so I'll be back with you guys when I've picked the team for today's game. This is the team for today's game. We've got David James in goal, Scott Minto, Christian Daly, Ian Pearce, Thomas Repka are our back four. Hutchinson, Carrick, Monker are our midfield three. Hutchinson playing as the box-to-box -box rather than the advanced playmaker that he has been playing earlier on in the season. And then up front, it is that familiar three now. Paolo Di Canio on the left, Sinclair on the right, both as inside forwards, and Jermaine Defoe as the pressing forward. Please let us get a result today. I would love it, love it if we beat them. Ah, oh, just have a look at this Arsenal team that we are up against today. David Seaman in goal. Adams the captain, Keown alongside him. Thankfully, he's on the football pitch and not commentating today. Ashley Cole, Patrick Vieira, Junichi Inamoto. What a name that is from the past. Was he the first Japanese player to ever play in the Premier League? Again, football fans, let me know down below. Uh, Robert Perez, Dennis Burkamp, Henri and Noako Kanu. And even on the bench... Sol Campbell, De Rumford Pele, Ray Parler, Colo Torre, Freddie Lumberg, who was a lot better at Arsenal than he was when he came to us. Let me tell you that. And now into the dressing room. Let's go. Outstretched arms. I want you to pick up where you left off last time. I'm going to go for that. I'm going to see what they, how they react to that. Not very well. Okay then, so let's just go with the usual. And yep, the you've got to have faith for faith for faith seems to have worked. And so let's go and get into this game, yeah? First highlight of the game, it's Arsenal with it. Lauren throwing it to Inamoto, back to Martin Keown, into Inamoto, who goes all the way back to the man with the world's most famous ponytail, David Seaman. Tony Adams, Martin Keown, Adams again, Vieira. I was warned in the press conference before this game that Arsenal do like a salt, patient passing play. So this is not a surprise to me at all. And now it's Lauren with the ball. He's gone past our man there. Gone to Noarco Canu, into Robert Perez, whose shot is saved, and James pushes it over the bar. That was a little bit too easy for them to get in behind us there. And, and now they've taken the corner quick, but we have got it away. And Mr. Vavavum has it, goes back into his own half, and all the way back to their keeper once again. They are doing a very good job of keeping the ball, but that was not. And now Minto should have that, as indeed he does. Goes back to David James. Ian Pearce. And he's gone long. Can Sinclair get onto this? Yes, he can. He's cut inside. He's in. Sinclair is into the box. He's gone for the shot. And Seaman with the save. Oh, what a long highlight this is. But now it's us with a corner ball. Don Hutchinson with the outswinger. That goes to nobody in a blue shirt. And finally, that highlight ends. Two minutes later, and this highlight is starting from pretty much the same place as the last one. 
But instead, Arsenal going a bit more direct. Carnu's bullied his man there. Carnu, he's got himself into space. He's gone for the shot, but easily saved by Mr. James. Half an hour gone now, and once again, it's Arsenal starting it with a throw in. This time, it works its way to Burkamp, back to Vieira, back to the Dutchman. And now it's Castley Cole coming through. Castley Cole's cross is blocked. Sinclair is very deep, but gets the ball there. And now always oh, under pressure. He's played it across the goal line. That was nervy. That was very, very nervy, but we've got it away. And now it's Paolo Di Canio with it. Di Canio with the ball and Lauren just takes it off him easy. Keown into Burkamp. Into Keown. To Carnu. Vieira. A wide to Thierry Henry. Henry is cutting in. Can we get this ball off Henri? No, we can't. But thankfully, again, it's just another long shot. And that gets saved. And, well, that is half time. We have not really been in this game. We have had six shots to Arsenal's eight. They've had four on target to our one. Yet, somehow, our XG is a little bit better. I really don't understand XG. Can somebody please try and explain it to me? If you've got a video that explains it well, link it down below, because I have not got a scooby dooby do how it works. But anyway, into the dressing room. Let's go. Let's go hands on hips. I'm going to say I've not been happy. Everyone's motivated. We're going to leave it like this until around the 60-minute mark. And then we're going to see how we get on. Perez with the first highlight of the second half. And it's gone to Vieira. And that's gone into the back of the net. That is disappointing. After I thought I'd got everyone motivated, it's a very easy, very simple, just corner goal. Poor, poor from everybody there. 55 minutes in, Lauren with the throw in, Minto intercepts, that's better, De Canio now with it, can he cut inside, yes he can, he's got Defoe in space ahead of him, Defoe is into the box, Defoe with the shot and it's hit the bar and it's gone away, oh that was a glorious chance, okay so 24 minutes left to go, We've made one substitution. Hutchinson was on a yellow card. So we've taken him off for Frederick Canute. We've gone, we've gone two up top. More direct passing. And we're distributing the ball to the flanks. And trying to hit earlier crosses. So hopefully this might be able to nick us a goal. Hopefully. 20 minutes left. Burkamp with a long free kick and a header has gone against our bar and our clearance has gone, hit somebody and just gone back into James's hands. Very, very lucky there. Making one more change now. Paul Kitson coming on for Jermaine Defoe. Have a look at that, Bence. There's nothing we can do there other than this to try and change this game. So, yep, that's what we're going for. Five minutes left. It's Perez with a free kick. We've headed it away. Can someone come deep and get that ball? Apparently not. And now it's Frederick Lundberg with it. Lundberg, can we win this back? Nope. Tony Adams. He plays it in and Perez is in behind and that's 2-0. And that is game over. That has been quite possibly our worst performance of the season thus far. We just have not been in this game of football at all. And the fact that Tony Adams is setting up their goal is a little bit disappointing. James, what was he thinking? He was halfway there and stopped. If he'd have carried on, I think he might have been able to get that ball. And well, no, never offside. Never, never, never offside. And hopefully... That's going to be the final whistle before we see any more. Yep. Oh, well, I did call the episode Highbury Hell or Heroes. And, well, don't think it was quite the hell I was expecting, but Arsenal were definitely a much better team than us. So this result was probably to be expected. They had 18 shots to our 14. Eight on target to our six. 
1.73 xG to our 1.48 and 52% of the possession. So, yeah, that is disappointing. But I'm going to go um, unlucky, boys. Yep, everyone's motivated. So let's have a look, see what, see what that does for the league table, and then we'll see when we're going to come back. As far as the league table goes, we have dropped down to fifth in the table. Three points now off the Champions League places. Let's hope this doesn't become a slide. Let's hope we can recover soon. But speaking of recovering soon, we have got a difficult game up next. It's Liverpool at home. I'm going to play that off camera. Our next game is going to be somewhere in January. How about Chelsea? How about Chelsea at home? They're fighting for the table. It's another London derby. I think that's a good one to be bringing you boys and girls next up. So that is what we are going to do. If you've enjoyed this video, pop a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 21 content. Total Extreme Wrestling content. It's coming, I promise. And as well as that, bus simulator content as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Taylor, at Taylor Made Gaming. If I can get that out, that'd be nice. And yep, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.